Hello, welcome back to another video. Today I'll be going over reviewing and unboxing this Wolfbox G900 dash cam. It basically replaces your mirror. Sold separately is a hard wire kit and a wire extender for their backup camera because I will be installing this into my 99 Astro camper van. This essentially goes over your OEM mirror. It's very light. Now in the box, we have a GPS, rubber straps to attach this to your mirror, an AC plug in case you did not want to hardwire your unit in, and a backup camera with its corresponding mounts. And it does come with a 32 gigabyte card. First things first is to actually install the unit, which would be right there. It does have this camera that will angle to where you need it to. Go ahead and grab these suckers. This side will face upwards. You have the type C, which gives power to the unit. You have GPS and you have the backup camera. And on the bottom is the power button. Just like that, the unit is installed. I will be installing this hardware kit, but I'm gonna first install just this AC plug. This should show you all how to do it. Super simple. The type C plug that plugs right into the unit. Plug it into your AC outlet, then Simply just plug it in. I'll go over all the features whenever I get everything else plugged in. I will be installing this hardware kit instead, which I'll do in just a second. Let's go ahead and plug in the GPS. Grab some alcohol. In the spot you'll be putting the GPS, which I'll be putting it right here, because the GPS unit will be hidden by this mirror when it's put in place, and I don't want to see it all the time. Remove the sticky sticky, and this would be placed right here. I'm gonna stuff all the wires in the headliner. That's supposed to face the other way around, my mistake. Make sure you face it the right way up. It says up right there. I just did not feel like reading. Let's go ahead and install the hardware kit. And the reason you wanna install the hardware kit is because it will record while the car is turned off. If you just did the AC plug, then it's just gonna record while you drive. Plug it in, plug it in, then we're gonna line the wires once again through the headliner. In the majority of the cars, there are two fuse boxes, one in the engine bay and one underneath the dash. In order to hardwire this in, you need a fuse box. So for me, I have one underneath the dash, so I'm gonna line this all the way down to underneath the dash. If you don't have an underneath the dash fuse box, you will have to go to the firewall. This is where my under the dash fuse box is. Because these are blue, that means there are 15 amp fuses, and there are no 15 amps here. And my engine bay fuse box also doesn't have any 15 amp fuses. So I ordered these double pin connectors, and I'll link that down below for your convenience. Just received the double pin connectors. This yellow cord is for battery, and this red cord is for accessory. It says it on the wires itself. So this battery cord needs to get power at all times, while this accessory only gets power when the key is turned over. And this is the ground. You just gotta connect it to a ground. Snip off these 15 amp ends here. Here are the double pin connectors where I can connect the 15 amp as well as whatever amp I need to use for the car slot. The unit's fuse was a 15 amp fuse, so I'm gonna grab two 15 amps. So now we need to find a fuse that is always powered on and a fuse that is only powered on when the key is turned over. If you want to make sure what is getting power of the keys off, you can grab a voltmeter, put this one on the ground, any bolt going into the car itself or the chassis, and then put this on the outside. As you can see, is getting power. The battery, I plugged it into the cigarette lighter right there. Then for the accessory, the yellow wire, the radio. So I'm using the cigarette lighter and the radio. And for the ground, I found a bolt to, that goes to the chassis. Now let's see if it turns on. Now it's time to install this backup camera. Now since we know this camera works, let's go ahead and uh, 
attach it to the back. I think this might be enough wire to get back there. I lined the backup camera from here to the passenger side, all the way down, down this wooden plank to right here. And this is where I'm at. If you want the backup camera to turn on automatically when you go into reverse, you can connect this wire. However, I'm not gonna do that because I don't really care for that. With the camera, you can have both screens on at the same time. So I'm just gonna skip that part. But if you wanna start, it's pretty easy. Red wire goes to the reverse light. You just wanna split it into that wire. So I pulled the wire through here. Now I'm gonna make the connection through here as well. I decided to use rivet nuts instead of rivets. So in case I need to get back in here, I could easily just pop these two bolts off and mess with the wires if I need to. Flip these back and forth. You can do only the front view or you can do only the back view. Now we need to format the SD card. So let's go ahead and format the SD card. Confirm. Let's go over the features with this dash cam. So by clicking or tapping the screen, this menu will pop up. You can stop the current recording and play it again if you want, and it'll start a new recording. You can then take a photo, and if there's something crazy happening, you can press urgent record, then you just press this to stop it. And to check that recording, you go on this video tab, and to see the front urgent recording okay, is just like that, and you can also see the back okay, camera and to see your normal footage, just go right here. And check that do the same with the back, your normal album, and check that same thing. And if you wanna see that photo we just took, is right here. And of course it, says it takes a photo in the back as well. And if you want to stop recording your conversations in the car, you can press this button, but I'm gonna keep it on. And we can go through the settings. So on the resolution, I have it at 2.5K because I'm using a 32 gigabyte SD card, which came with this unit. Um, it could go 4K, but I don't think it makes that big of a difference on resolution. It's just the space would be taken up. Um, I have it recording on loop every three minutes. That's standard, I think. Sound recording is on. G sensor, I have it on low because if you want on middle or high, it might start recording false recordings where maybe somebody walks in front of you or a loud exhaust goes through and it wants to record. So you don't really want that. On 60 hertz, screensaver mode, I have it off. Um, click tone is also off because that's annoying. Uh, volume, screen brightness, you can adjust it. Display mode, rear image adjustments. So in case you install the rear camera upside down or whatever, you can rear flip or rear mirror to, to make it look normal. You got a time display, mine's on. Take reminder, that's pretty cool, but I don't, I'm not gonna have that on. Speed unit, I'm in miles per hour because this is America. Time zone setting, um, I'm at that time zone. You wanna set your time zone because the GPS will set the time to your time zone you select. Your language, I'm on English. And if you want to turn off the camera, it's still recording and have a normal mirror, you can have it just like this. That's a lot of dang features. Now let's go for a test drive. So every dash cam on the market today will say it's 2.5K or 4K, but doesn't really represent that type of quality. And as I'm driving by the stack of cars to the front license plates, it's actually semi-difficult to make out most of the letters, but you can if you pause the video. It's just not perfect, and there aren't any perfect dash cams out there at the moment. It really shines when you get down to a lower speed, and you can see the car right in front of you. And here's the real reason you get dash cam, is so you can capture crazy people like this trying to wedge through heavy traffic and potentially get hit because she's not paying attention how close she is scooting up forwards. 
people have issues. Now here's the back camera and it's, I say roughly the same quality. It does pretty good. You can definitely make out that license plate when it's close enough and make out that lady blowing her bubble gum. Here's the night shot. Currently the moon is at a waxing crest, which means it's almost not a moon, non-existent, so it's very dark. But you can see the license plate coming up behind me in this F-150. The night is really bringing out how dirty my windscreen is, and that is causing an issue with the visibility license plates in front of me. But you can still make out the Honda Civic right there. And in motion, you can see this license plate behind me. I was kind of scared that the headlights were going to mess up and distort the images, but I'm surprisingly surprised. If you're interested in buying this Wolfbox G900, then go and check out the link down below. That's one great way to support me and this channel. And honestly, I'm pretty impressed with this unit. It does a lot. And it, this is a sense of security. Hope no one gets in a crash, but if you do, it'd be nice to be able to say, if it wasn't your fault, it wasn't your fault. But that's all for today, guys. This is Chris Automotive. I always appreciate and respect one another. I'll see you next time.